Today's lesson will cover the West Virginia Next Generation Content Standards and Objectives for Science for fifth grade, but any student of any age can try the following activities. The materials needed for today are as follows. First, you'll need to print the sheets that have the mazes and the coding directives listed on them. These can be laminated or they don't need to, it's not necessary. You'll need scissors to cut out all the coding words and Legos or Duplos are great for making the mazes more fun, but they're not necessary. You do, however, need a small doll or a Lego person to help you get through the maze. I will post a link down below in the comment section so that you can get to the printouts that you need to have to get ready for the activity. Before we begin building our mazes and getting down to some coding, let's talk about some vocabulary. What is computer programming? Well, it, the definition is the activity or job of writing programs for computers. But what does that mean? And what do computer programmers actually write? We can see that for the definition of the word code, it means a system of words, letters, or signs used to represent a message in secret form or a system of numbers, letters, or signals used to represent something in a shorter or more convenient form. And that is what computer programmers do. They tell the computer what they wanted to do in the shortest possible form. This is what some computer programming code looks like. You may be familiar with the program Scratch, and this is what it looks like. This is code. When you begin this activity, you'll notice that there are six mazes to choose from, five that are pre-made and one that you can do on your own. For this activity, I'm just going to go through the ones that my friend Brittany and I did um, via a video call, and I'll show you how we solved our coding problem. This very first maze that we're looking at is the simplest of the bunch. The start is on the left hand side and the end is directly across from it on the right side of the paper. To get from one end to the other is just a straight line, so it makes it easy for beginning coding. If you count the blocks from start to end, you'll notice that there are seven steps. And as you can see, we could program each step with a go forward and we would have a long line of go forward in our code, seven of them with an end. But remember when we talked about coding, we are trying to get it done in the least amount of lines possible. So this is where we introduced second level coding with the directions on the right. For this piece of code, you'll notice that we're saying for a certain number of steps, you were to go forward. So in our last example, for seven steps, we went forward. But you can write any number you need for how many steps you need your character to go forward. And this is condensing your code lines down to two instead of seven or four, whichever number amount of steps you need to go. I wanna show you another maze that is a little bit harder and look how long our code will be if we don't use any of the shortcuts of giving it the number of steps. It is very long and that would make it easy for someone to make mistakes. So now I'd like to show you how we did this one in a very condensed form. So it's very easy to see that I couldn't even fit all of our directives on the table at the time and I was running out of them on the left when we did it without any shortcuts. But on the right, you'll notice that it's a much more concise and shorter coding. I want to show you one last way of how you could code this same maze of a level two maze, I would say, but this level of coding is more for high school and college age because it introduces things called loops where it makes the coding even shorter by making it loop around and check for the questions and then do the directives in order and repeats it 
um, to get to the same end, but in a less amount of code with more complex directions. This picture right here just shows you the three different, different levels of code lined up against each other. And remember, the code on the left is not complete because we didn't have enough tiles to do it all the way down. But you can clearly see that once you learn your basic coding and then you can introduce some shortcuts and then you learn looping, how your code will change. But for right now, it's just easy and simple, you can start with just telling your person which way to go with the basic directives. I wanna show you what my friend Brittany and I did via a video call. After I did the same lesson with her, um, she picked one of the mazes and I picked the same one on my side and she made her walls and she told me the directions for me to get my character on my maze across to its end and I programmed her directions in front of me and took my person across my maze and it was interesting and fun because I didn't have to be with her to know that my person was actually going to make it across the maze using her directions and I think she had a really good time trying to figure it out herself and I know she played with some of them after um, just like I hope you will and I really hope that everybody can send me their mazes and their directives so we can check them out and I would love to see what kind of walls that you guys create to get your um, characters through your maze or if you design your own maze. Um, I'd also like to tell you that there are a couple websites that you can go to to do some coding online. Um, one I really love is called Scratch, and I know a lot of kids have um, done this one already, but it is very fun and it introduces you with these same basic steps on the visual platform um, as we're doing on a paper hands-on platform. I really hope to see some of your work in the future and I hope you had fun with this activity.